Tecmo on the NES was primarily known for, well, Tecmo Bowl, also the Ninja Gaiden trilogy. When you think of Tecmo, Mighty Bomb Jack probably isn't the first thing to come to mind. I I'll be honest here, this game completely passed me by as a kid, but I found it the other day amidst a stack of NES games on my shelf, so I popped it in just to see what it was all about. The story here is that the mighty King Pamera and his royal family were all kidnapped by the evil King Beelzebut, and only you, Mighty Jack, were left to try and rescue them by fighting your way through 16 levels in this pyramid. Mighty Bomb Jack is one part platformer, one part puzzle game, and it's not particularly good at either of them, but it's strangely addictive in a stupid, annoying kind of way. Mighty Bomb Jack is actually quite tiny, but he can jump very high, as well as float, sort of like the princess in Super Mario 2. Getting the hang of Jack's jumps is tricky, but crucial if you want to go far in this game. If you jump and then immediately tap the jump button a second time, you can cut the jump off early and start descending back to the ground, and I recommend practicing that maneuver for a bit if you can. As you make your way through, you'll have to avoid all sorts of enemies. Skulls, mummies, spastic turtle shells, fireballs, Max Rebo from Jabba's Palace. Of course, the manual has nonsensical names for all of these guys, like Lizzie, Billy, DG, TG. Speaking of which, the wording in this manual is... It's something else. Playing Mighty Bomb Jack with a drawn-up map will increase your playing pleasure. Ooh, gotta get me some of that. Anyway, it's one hit and you're dead, and you can't jump on the enemies either, so your only recourse is to avoid them altogether, and you can also jump on treasure chests along the way for power-ups and extra loot. Look, I I'll level with you here. I never quite grasped what the power-ups were supposed to do, except that if you push the B button, you can activate them. Depending on what color Jack turns, he can open special treasure chests, I guess? The manual is somewhat cryptic about this and just says, Other secret powers are awarded. Huh? You'll also find mighty coins, which are worth a thousand points, but if you collect too many of these coins, the game sentences you to torture! Cruel and unimaginable torture. It sticks you in a room with a bunch of enemies and you have to jump at least 50 times before getting sent back to the level. That may sound easy, but remember Jack jumps super high, and also if the enemies linger too long on screen, they tend to multiply and mutate and just go wobbling all over the place. So the levels are actually a bit on the short side. You just run through them avoiding enemies and collecting bombs. Oh, also if you collect enough bombs, a special power ball appears, and if you grab that, all of the enemies on screen turn into coins for a few seconds, and this is particularly helpful at the end of each stage. Once you get to the end of the stage, you'll go through a doorway that takes you to a palace room. Here you have to collect all of the bombs on screen to open the exit and clear the stage. So it turns out Mighty Bomb Jack is actually a follow-up of sorts to the arcade game, Bomb Jack, and these palace rooms are more like the arcade version. This may seem easy, but just like in the torture room, you're trapped on screen and the enemies are constantly swarming you. You'll have to get the hang of Jack's as well as the enemy's movements, and they really can get out of hand if you take too long here. You'll want to try to come up with a plan in your head quickly in these rooms as to how you want to grab all of the bombs before the enemies start to multiply and surround you. For the most part, they do move slow except for the turtle shells, but they'll follow you on screen, so you have to lure them over to one side before making a beeline around them. Also, the palace room hides a little secret. After you grab the first bomb, a fuse will ignite on the different bomb somewhere in the room. If you grab all of the other bombs before grabbing the bomb with the lit fuse, then grab the lit bomb and successfully escape, you'll clear the stage and warp all the way through to the next stage's palace stage, skipping the whole platforming area altogether. If you're good enough, you could technically make your way all the way through to the final level of the game this way, skipping the platform areas entirely. However, there's a catch. If you die at any point after you've warped, you'll go all the way back to the last stage that you completed in its entirety. For instance here, I managed to get all the way to the level 10 palace room, but then I died so it sent me all the way back to the last stage I made it all the way through, which was level 2. Ugh. Risk versus reward, man. But like I said before, it's strangely addictive in its own stupid way, and I found myself wanting to replay the palace room areas over and over again, especially to try and collect all of the bombs in the right order so I could get the warp. The game is deceitfully tough, but the play control is good enough, 
and the hit detection isn't bad. You can really get into it once you've had a few close calls where you barely make it out alive. Also, the music is kind of cheerful, even though there's only one major track that plays through most of the game. It kind of reminds me of Dig Dug or Bubble Bobble. The only drawback is the difficulty really goes off the charts in the final level. There's no skipping to the palace room here, and I... <laughs> I don't even know what to do here. The game boasts secret passages and multiple endings to give it some replay value, although I couldn't even get to one ending, so who knows. What did you think? Did you play this one growing up? Did anyone out there play the arcade version of Bomb Jack? I don't remember seeing it anywhere. As always, thank you for watching. Please don't text and drive, and I'll see you next time on Friday Night Arcade.